How you doing? Andy Rizika here, bringing on yet another famous actor for us to talk to this week. I've got Steven Kruger. You might know him from a lot of stuff around Hollywood, films and television. In particular, Sony's blockbuster Goosebumps, also on the television side, NCIS, Pretty Little Liars, Hawaii Five-0, so many more, and many on the CW as well. But I'm bringing him on this week to talk about the Showtime series, Yellow Jackets. So thanks so much, Steven, for coming on and talking with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So first of all, I do want, but we're going to get to Yellow Jackets, but I do just want to ask you about how you got to where you are now, because I think that's really interesting how you came from Florida to basically be in Hollywood. Yeah, everybody has a different story, right? This is one of those businesses that, uh, you know, anybody you talk to, they're going to have a different way that they ended up here, um, which I love about this, this business. Um, for me personally, I, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it a fluke, but it was certainly unintentional. Um, I had planned on going to law school. That was, that was, you know, my, my plan from probably when I was 10 years old. I don't know why. I don't know why a 10 year old would want to be a lawyer, but um, I, uh, I grew up acting, you know, in, in high school and community theater and all that kind of stuff. And I always loved it, but it felt like a hobby to me, not something I would do as a, as a career. So I went to college, I studied all the stuff one would study, you know, before they're going to go to law school. And then um, I found myself in LA for an internship at a law firm right after college. And uh, in the two years that I was going to take off before I actually went to law school, I thought, eh, you know what, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll give acting a shot again. You know, I loved it when I was a kid and I'm in LA, why not? And uh, one thing kind of led to another, and here we are, you know, like 10 years later, and I'm, I'm still not a lawyer, so that's the good news. <laughs> that's the best part for me yeah. personally, too. Yeah. Uh, so, you, you know, you landed yourself on, on Showtime, the Yellow Jacket series, uh, interesting series, what it sounds like. Can you just give a brief uh, synopsis? Uh, let, I'll let you introduce it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, ostensibly the plot is really straightforward, right? It's about a team of high school girls soccer players that crashes in the mountains and uh, they're forced to survive out in the wilderness for about 18 months or so, a year and a half before they're rescued. Um, and then the unique element of our show is it takes place in two different time periods. So you've got uh, us in 1996 when we actually crash in the mountains and then the show flashes forward to present day, which is about 25 years later. And it catches up with the, uh, you know, the few people who actually survived those 18 months out in the wilderness. And they're still kind of dealing with the repercussions of everything that, that happened out there 25 years ago. So um, it's really unique in, in that sense that you get to see kind of the genesis of, of these girls and then also how it's affecting their lives 25 years later as, as adults. I'll never forget the day I heard their plane had gone missing. What do you think? really happened out there. All I know is that what happened was a tragedy. Those girls were special. They were champions. I used to think all the sex, the drinking, the drugs. I used to think I did those things because of what happened out there. What I saw, what I did. Hello, Misty. You crazy. It's been a while. I take it you know why I'm here. Okay, I'm out of here. We agreed, say no more than we have to. The truth is, the plane crashed, a bunch of my friends died. And then the rest of us starved and scavenged and prayed until they finally found us. I think we both know there's more to it than that. I think it'll be good to reconnect with some old friends. And your role in this series is, uh, as I read the description, the sexy soccer coach yeah. that, that, that takes wrote, care of the, myself, the team. Actually. <laughs> you wrote that yourself. I don't know. So was there someone on set making sure you know you were the attractive guy throughout the flashbacks and even the Today shots? You know, actually, I'll be honest, there was. It, it, it became a point of contention, funny enough, because I, I did, you know, I, I wanted it to be as authentic as possible. And I, I remember pitching to them when we first started. I, I said, you know, what are we going to do with, with my facial hair? I mean, I don't, you know, what do I have a razor out here? And, and you know, am I just going to keep letting this grow? And they said, well, 
to a certain extent, but we do have to make sure that it's still within the realm of, of sexy. You know, you still have to be a like sexy guy. And I thought, <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna make this a thing. Um, but no, I, I played Ben Scott. Um, I'm the assistant coach of the, of the soccer team. And I end up being the only adult that survives the plane crash. So I suddenly find myself in this situation where I'm kind of the leader and the you know authority figure, at least in name, because I'm the, the coach and I'm an adult stranded out here with all of these teenage girls. Um, and then, of course, like you said, there's the added element of, uh, yeah, they kind of see me as one of the hot teachers of the school. So I'm kind of the object of some unrequited crushes. And, and that ends up playing out in its own very unique and interesting way, as I'm sure you can imagine. Was it pretty demanding? I mean, I know you're shooting up in the cold up there. What's the most demanding part? Is it is it being the sock sexy soccer coach or maybe even some other elements of the of the production? It was, yeah, and, and actually um, you, you flipped it. The, the first season takes place um, kind of at the end of the spring all the way through the summer into the fall. So that's that's the first, you know, the first season is about those four or five months or so. Um, so we were actually up in Vancouver uh, in, in the smack in the middle of the summer and it was it was incredibly challenging just from a physical perspective. I mean, we, you know, they, they didn't do us any favors by building us a fake forest on a on a comfy soundstage with air conditioning. They they found an actual forest and just dropped us right in the middle of it. So, you know, every day we came into work, it was we were putting on the same kind of dirty, crusty, smelly clothes. Um, you know, we were crawling around in the dirt. It was hotter than all get out for a lot of weeks during the summer. There were mosquitoes. I mean, it, you know, it was, it was real. There were a lot of times when I think we all kind of looked around at each other and thought, we don't have to act very much. Like this is kind of miserable, you know, being out here. Um, but it really worked. You know, I think the, the production team was smart in doing that. And, uh, you know, as uncomfortable as it may have been personally at times, it, uh, it really worked for the show to kind of all put us in that element. Can you just uh, tell our audience when, where they can find it, where they can expect it, where they can follow it? Yeah, absolutely. So Yellow Jackets premieres on uh, November 14th. It's a Sunday coming up real soon on Showtime. Uh, it's going to be at 10 p.m., I believe. And uh, yeah, then we'll be, uh, we'll be weekly there on Sunday nights for 10 full episodes. So I hope everybody's able to check it out. It's, it's an incredibly unique show. And I've been saying expect the unexpected because I think people watch the trailer and read the description and they get an idea in their heads of what they think the show is going to be. And I can tell you it, uh, it's going to surprise you. That's awesome. How can they follow you as an actor? You have a lot of uh, social media where people can follow your progress? Yeah, I've got the same handle across all my social media, whether it's Twitter or Instagram. I'm uh, at Stephen A. Kruger. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And, you know, good luck with the rest of the season and, and all your future projects. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Hopefully we'll talk soon. Thank you so much to Stephen Kruger. Uh, for STL TV, I'm Andy Rizika. Be sure and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all our social media channels. So stay tuned right here on STL TV.